Hey everybody, Kevin Dean here for you for another Fire Force episode review. This is going to be season 2, episode 8 of Fire Force in the dub. Sorry this is coming out so late, I'm going to just go ahead and just fly, not fly, but you know, I'm going to take my time. This, this review is going to have to be different, <laughs> a lot different than last time. I'm going to give out the main points, everything that happened, but then I'm not going to go like through the whole thing like I usually do because this is my fourth, third time recording this and i just kept messing up. i know it all now but you know it's not like you can't really go like yeah it's just whatever so let's get it oh yeah it's, it's not I, I have not finished the season it's not legit when i made a uh, review number seven I, legit, I watched the episode we watched it again you know get get all the information i need i play it right next to me then i do it so i have not finished this season yet i think there's only 12 episodes this season which is wild Anyway, the main plot points of this episode. We found out how this oasis was made in this like vast desert. Now, at the end, at the very end of the opening, if you pause it, you see like this uh, hooded, uh, cloaked figure. That person we get to see is this woman. And I'm thinking she might have been the cause of the first cataclysm. You don't really know why she would have done it, but I think she did that because she has an adult link. Anyway... She gets souls up and she one eye is black, one eye is white. She gets souls up one day randomly and she teaches all the animals how to speak. And he asks, the mole asks her, like, you know, what are you doing here or whatever. I mean, she was like, here to help everybody, here to help you guys. And she rips off a piece of, her, piece of her cloak and gives it to him. That's how he has the scarf thing he has now. And then they were all hungry and she was like, get filled up by my flames. And she made a flame that looks just like the flame as the tail of the mole. And she makes, I don't know that's wild. She makes it, and then the mole and the bird were like, Yeah, when we got closer to it, it gave us warmth, obviously, because it's a flame. And we didn't feel full anymore. I mean, we didn't feel hungry anymore. We felt full, like we just ate a whole meal, which is wild. Then they said, like a few days later, or like the same day, I think, she went over to the tabernacle, just reached out her hand, and her hand started like warming up with the fire. And then she activated this steam, and smoke started coming out of it fire out of each pillar and when that happened a bunch of smoke and stuff and uh, dirt started coming up off the ground and it's just vanished and i haven't seen her since and they want to stay here because of all the things she done and maybe she might come back but you know all the demon inferno i mean suit <laughs> all the infernos and those uh, infernal dogs keep coming in right after that they get attacked by a bunch of infernos i kind of like how senior fought fought them because he like he kicked a bunch of them then one came from the side and tried to punch him, so he boosted himself up in the air and then made fire on his uh, foot, and he starts smiling. Then he comes down for, mm, hit him right in the head and gone. And always you need to pray for Lotom. Everybody in the cat girl officially assists him now so he can pray for everybody. I forget Juggernaut was a massive punk. He just kept running around, getting chased by everybody, which is so ridiculous. <laughs> anyway... Uh, the whistle dude is like, we gotta figure out what to do and how to do stuff. Oh, no, 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 no. The other main plot point was while they were fighting them, one, the whistle dude was handling by himself. Like, he kept on a punch, he kept blocking, dodging, then he grabbed him, and he was like, if y'all need this tabernacle to live, why don't you just coincide, like, live peacefully with these animals? And then the, the front of he's fighting starts to talk, and everybody suck, and he was like, foolish human, this isn't made to, like, uh, bring joy and happiness. This tabernacle is made to destroy the world, which is wild. So this is the so this is like the evangelist's main goal. There's another tabernacle in the city, but I think they're gonna use this one. This is probably the one they're gonna use. Anyway, the scene cuts, and we see a bunch of these infernals bringing these stone tablets with a bunch of numbers on them to this one infernal. And this inferno is a demon inferno. And then the group finds out about that by the mole. Because he was like, yeah, this is one dude with horns. And they're like, oh, shoot. This is bad. We don't have enough fun. You know, this tiny group cannot take on a demon inferno. Even if we could, maybe if we're somewhat strong enough, we don't have enough firepower to take this dude out. And even if we did, it's going to burn this whole forest. They kept saying that. Like, yo, even if we did, we're able to fight this dude and beat him, it's going to take out the whole forest. I'm like, yeah, but... If that's true, but you can just fly them up in the air, and then do it, then it won't be no harm, you know, no harm, no foul. They just, but this whole episode, they kept saying, like, yo, it's going to destroy the forest if we uh, beat this thing. I'm like, yeah, but you can just 
kill him in the air. Like, I don't see the problem. Anyway, and every all these other Infernos praise this one Inferno. All these Infernos were fighting this episode, even the demon one, are from the first great cataclysm 200 plus years ago. So they've been stuck like this for 200 years. Anyway, he keeps saying, like, follow me. I'll be able to have you guys die and have us die. And then we can finally go off to the afterlife and leave these burning bodies. And they're like, yes, oh, we praise you, we praise you. And he'll like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, okay, that makes sense. I mean, like, they hate, like, you know, you imagine your body is all metallically now. You're constantly burning. Like, that, that got to suck. Like, you're going to miss your own body. And he's the only demon in front of him out this whole group. And he doesn't look monstrous. All the other ones look monstrous. Like, you know, that one from a few episodes ago was like a centaur thing. The first one that the compound dude fought, he was like this giant bulky mess that just roared. It was like a monster. He's sleek. Looks like a, he has the regular human body. He just got the horns. And he's just that powerful, which is wild. And they made a plan to go into the tabernacle and look it out and scope it out and jump. And, oh, yeah, I... The evangelist plan, man, it always never made sense because I was thinking, like, you know how the sun is in the center of all the planet, like, all the planets surround the sun? I was like, okay, maybe they want the earth to be like that because they said they want the earth to be a second sun. But like, that would kill them. And what's the point of that? Like, okay, the planets, ro the planets rotate around the earth now. I mean, okay, well, I mean, I don't see the difference. I mean, I guess... There won't be any daytime because we're we're the actual sun now, so we don't have another sun to. Well, I mean, it's always daytime. Everything's gonna be on fire. It's the sun, so I don't know. Never mind. I'm always confused about the white clad. Um, oh yeah, I forget that. That's what they call them, the white clad or the evangelist clad. I'm always confused about that. Anyway, they're like, well, this is probably what they're gonna use. We gotta scope it out and see how to like you know deactivate or whatever. And, you know, they find out, oh, yeah, I already said that. Oh, yeah, they did They did bring up about how could they use the, oh, I'm so sorry, could they use the tabernacle that's in the city? Remember, there's a giant tabernacle in the city, but it's, like, used as a power plant to, you know, help everybody have electricity. So, like, I doubt it because that one's already operational and they got to make it. This one, uh, you know, is meant to this sort of world, and... I remember they brought up how Giovanni attacked, um, I forget the dude, the mechanic, I forget his name. Anyway, you know, attacked him just so he can get that key. So I'm guessing that key can start up this tabernacle again. Anyway, they go into there, and the original plan was for everybody to send outside to send guard. I want the scientist and the dude with the whistle to go inside. Okay, that's a good plan. Let's scope it out. So they get inside, no problems, because all the um, demon infernos, like, I keep saying demon infernos, like, all the regular infernos are like, outside just scoping it out, like, looking at them. Anyway, they go inside and they walk around like a big chunk of it, and they're like, yeah, ain't nobody here. It's all deserted. They're like, okay, this is good, this is good. You know what? New plan. Scientist guy, whistle guy, and Arthur all go this way. Get like, Arthur, you come with me. I mean, you come with us just in case we need backup. Okay, that's good. So they go off to go search and y'all you know, figure out what's going on. Oh wait, shoot! Did I say um, all those infernos were bringing stone tablets with numbers on them to that one demon inferno, and then they were praising them. Yeah, there were numbers on those tablets they were bringing. Anyway, so the new plan is you know Arthur goes with those two just in case they need backup. Everybody else stands out for perimeter, and they get ambushed by the demon inferno. And by all the regular infernals, and they're all fighting them. They're like, what are we going to do? They're like, well, we have to make sure none of these infernals get inside and bum rush the captain, the scientists do, because they got to figure out what's going on. So stand our ground, we have to beat them. They're like, how are we going to beat this demon infernal? You know, we're not like, <laughs> you know, we're not like the compound dude. Or, yeah, the compound dude beat both. No, 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 he didn't. You know, we're not like the compound dude. And it took everybody together just to beat the other one. We have to find some sort of way. And Shinra comes in and starts to bum rush this dude with kicks. But the demon in front was just blocking everything with just one hand. Boom, 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 boom. And really, he doesn't want to destroy the world just to be evil. He just wants to destroy the world just so he can die. He hates being in his body. So he was like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start that thing up somehow. Because he knows they can destroy the world. He was like, well, that is more than enough firepower to take me out. Because he knows, since he's different than everybody else, 
it's going to take a lot more firepower to take himself out. And they were like, well, if you start this up to just kill yourself, it's going to destroy the world. He was like, I don't care. So, hey, at least I get to die. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that is kind of wild. I mean, that's not the worst intentions, but that is still kind of wild. Like, you, like, yeah, I don't care. I mean, he has been stuck in his body for almost centuries. But at the same time, it's like, yo, you're pretty wild. Like, yo, this sort of world, you just said you can die. Like, that's wild. Anyway, Seamer is knocked back, and he comes back in with a mean kick. And the, he's like, that ain't going to do nothing, and punches him and makes tons of fireballs and throws them at him. And he makes one big one because he dies and everything else and throws it at Shinra. And Shinra jumps up and kicks it. And it's like a struggle. Then he's like, yeah, and kicks the fireball into the forest. And he just, it, it bulldozes through the forest. And the mall is like, what are you doing? We're trying to save this place. Not the story, my bad, my bad, my bad. Oh, I'm so dumb. I forget this joke. This is pretty funny. When they were inside the tabernacle and they made a new plan about Arthur going with them, he was like, okay, break. And he grabs his whistle and blows it as loud as he can. And they were like, what are you doing? You know, we're trying to be secretive and jump. What? Why, why are you blowing his whistle? It was funny because even the bird was like, idiots. <laughs> he was like, idiot. Anyway, they're fighting. And they're still kind of constantly like, how are we going to beat the demon in front of them? The streamer starts thinking like, okay, I might be able to have enough firepower, enough juice if I had a dough lake. But that can't work. None of the white cloud are out here. So is not here. And all of us together, maybe, but it's going to be tough. And then, boom, he goes into the, he gets out double lane because, you know, the screen goes, he's like, <gasps> and they're like, are you good? And then he looks up and he's in the astral plane. And then that lady from, you know, that helped the mold talk and stuff is right behind Simra. And he, like, goes, and see, I mean, she, like, goes through Simra. Then a bunch of fire comes out of him from the front. And he's like, oh. <gasps> And then he goes back into the, you know, real world. And he's like, was that our door link? Maybe. Okay. We, I mean, we probably got this. Let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> sorry, that was so dumb. Uh, no, I'm not at that. I'm thinking of something that's going to come out. Anyway, the last part of the episode is when it's Arthur, the scientist, and the dude with the whistle. They're in that room. Where there's just stone tablets all the way down this like hallway sort of with random numbers on them. The what's the dude is like, are these like um numbers to type in to start this thing up? Like a code? And the scientist dude was like, that's a good observation, but usually there's some sort of pattern so you can do the code. These numbers are all over the place. And they're like, hey, look up there. There's like numbers even on the ceiling and on the walls. So they're like, what all these numbers supposed to mean? Like, what are they for? That doesn't make any sense. And then Arthur, he just starts mumbling. He was like, the Arthur cow goes down the river and slays the dragon. And then, you know, they look at him like, huh? <laughs> and then he was like, huh? This is a uh, kingdom, yeah? And just look at him. And then, like, to be continued. And that's it. I'm like, so he's like, is he reading these numbers or something? I'm guessing. It kind of seemed like that. But it kind of seemed like he's just mumbling, like, random, like, nightly stuff like he normally do. So I don't think he's really saying anything important. And I was laughing because I remember um, when they were looking down at the number trying to figure out, like, if it's not a code, what else could it be? Because, like, you know, like, there's like, just tons of these, you know, what in the world? I did see, like, if you, you could put them together. Cause I did see, like, a, the number five at the bottom, and then, like, the top half. So, okay, you put these two together, it's going to make that five, and then, you know, that's going to take a long time. I'm like, you know, what's going on? And then the bird on top of the side of his head, he goes, claw! Then you look at him like, huh? Yeah, I've seen a bunch of these frowns grabbing him like crazy. So this really must be a big part of the puzzle to somehow start this thing back up, which is wild. Oh, yeah, I forget. They were, you know, oh, wait, no, I think I said that already, how it was supposed to destroy everything. But I was like, why was he? Oh, yeah, I... no, yeah, that's right. When the lady started this thing up, that's how it made the forest. They said as soon as, they, as, soon as he started the thing back up, it made this giant forest. Forest and now why would she make the forest and start this thing back up and she could try to talk and everything if she wanted to destroy this place and she was saying like protect the forest protect the forest and she was head at the beginning at the beginning of the episode so I don't know I mean it seems like she was the only a Dolo Link type of person that's there that was there all those time ago so it seemed like she did the great cataclysm the first time but 
I'm thinking like, why? It wasn't for jokes or the giggles. Maybe she was fighting somebody and she needed to bring up that much firepower. But who? Uh, who? I don't know. That's, this is wild. Whew. Like, share, subscribe. That was the episode. So, yeah. like, share, subscribe. See you all later. Thank you all for watching. Thank you all for being wonderful and beautiful and handsome human beings. Thank you for being wonderful and human. Thank you for being wonderful, human, handsome, and beautiful human beings. I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye. Next episode, I should be going through each part of the episode. This one, I I really need to do something, so I just gotta do the main points. Bye. Oh shoot, bro. So that, my bad. I will forget. After Shinra kicked that fireball into the forest, um, the dude, the demon in front of him, ran up on Shinra because he was in the air, like midair, and he went like this, and he was like holy flame or like bright brightness of holiness or whatever. Like he did that, and it's just like this beam of light that's engulfing the Shinra, and then he just turns up the heat, boom! <laughs> like he's getting even bigger. I'm like the way the way they animated that. It looked like he's getting disintegrated. I'm like, what in the world? But then Shinra, he just like falls out of it. And he's, you know, he's struggling to get back up. And he's like, okay. I don't really have to go all out on this dude. I'm like, okay. Shinra's dirt, bro. Like, that, 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 that is pretty wild. Like, I, I mean, it, it, yeah. It was the fact that everybody was just looking at like, hmm. I'm like, nobody's going to freak out. Like, Shinra just died. Like, nobody freaked out like that. They were like, huh. Okay, <laughs> that's why. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, but yeah, I, that that was only five. So yeah, bye bye.